As I'm going down, I can just hear the music in my head slowly, <laughs> slowly setting off into the sunset. <laughs> Why didn't I say like 80 or 80 or I walked down the corridor, Black History Week, like I'm on the wall. I was nice emotional. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was emotional. Eddie Jones just said, like, mate, the reason I don't pick you is because you're never yourself. You could smell it on me that I was uncomfortable, moving a bit shifty, couldn't really integrate with everyone. I'm here at the Bristol Bears training ground today to meet somebody who is about as wide as he is tall. His teammates refer to him as the baby rhino. Propzilla and England coach Eddie Jones calls him his gangster. How cool are those nicknames, by the way? Come on, let's go and meet Ellis Genge. Woo! Here we go. Ellis, how are you, mate? How are you, bro? You good? Yeah, lovely, mate. <laughs> the baby rhino. Look at you, you little beast. Um, before we get started, right, first of all, this training ground is absolutely incredible, isn't no, it? Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, we're going to have a little look around it in a minute, but not a lot of people might know this, but you actually used to be a goalkeeper, right? I did, yeah. Uh, like properly, professionally kind no, of thing? No, no, not professional, no. Like, well, like, like you did academy and yeah, stuff, under yeah? Yeah, under-13s, under-12s and that, yeah. Did you really, oh, yeah? I was no good, I was no good. I was actually described as a young Ben Foster. Shut yeah. your mouth, you were. <laughs> it's because you're joking. handsome, that's all it is. Exactly, it's yeah, you're yeah, handsome. exactly. Um, we'll try and do a little bit of goalkeeping in a bit then, yeah? I'm keen, So I yeah. might have bought my gloves with me as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah always prepared, always. Right, come on, come on, show me yeah, this yeah, place, yeah, it's yeah. incredible. Let's go. How long have you been here, by the way, at Bristol? This, well, I was here first time in 2012-13 season when I was like 18 years old. And I signed back, this is probably my fourth month back at the club, so not long. Mate, this training ground is a joke. Look at this gym that no, we've got crazy. here. No, it's crazy. It's honestly crazy, but like, this isn't something that you'd see at all the other clubs. Like, we're quite lucky, to be honest. Really? Is, is, does nobody else have these kind of facilities? Uh, maybe one other club, but no, you wouldn't find this anywhere else in England, I wouldn't say. Honestly, right, that is... I don't think I've been at a football club that has got a gym that good. It looks like one of them college gyms in um, Proper, America, yeah, like, like NFL, NFL teams ones, or something yeah. like that. To be fair, we spend a lot of time in there, so you have got to have a decent setup. You've got um, some of the plates on the bench press are a bit bigger than the ones we use at football. Um, please, can you just talk to me about this picture here for a second? Yes, yeah, so obviously you see everyone else is all smiling and that, but I actually came in off the back of a social with uh, Leicester <laughs> at the time, so <laughs> I come in, didn't realise it was headshot day, I was hungover, and yeah, that's, that's the product of what you get. You look a million dollars, <laughs> mate. <laughs> so you're hungover to death there, I'm yeah? in the right state, yeah. I love that, mate. I love it. <laughs> so we'll have a little look in here. This is the analysis room. We literally spend probably two, three hours here a day. Oh, my gosh, um, mate. Look at this place. No, it's class. And like I said, this isn't consistent with any other club. So like when we're in here, basically everyone picks a seat, usually like shot callers on the front row. I am about at the back somewhere. What do you mean shot callers? Like so the, the like, bigger person? Yeah, so I guess in football it'd be hard to sort of um, relate. I guess goalkeepers call the shots from the back yeah, as well. Yeah. Or well, the good ones anyway. And then obviously like nines, ten, so at fly halves and the people who pass the ball, they usually sit on the front row because they have the most input. So the whole room's packed in the morning though of everyone in the building. Do you do that every day? Every single day, every really? Monday, yeah. yeah. Get all the messages out, what we need to get for the day, sort of half eight probably. And then like once the talking's done, he'll like move all well, we'll all move the chairs out of the way like that. And you've got like the little tactics board up there, but then like you'll walk through it on here. So I'll be like, right, Ben. We've got to call your off me and then we'll like walk through what it looks like. Oh, so like. you get all in position? Well, you, we can't fit 15 people on here, weirdly enough, but you do it like, you'd say you've got your fly half here and you'd say, right, we're playing this off the edge and then you'd like just show the motion because obviously it's all right doing it all on a whiteboard, but not everyone learns like that. And I'd say in football, obviously, it's a little bit easier, I'd say, with the tactics because you can like vision it and it's yeah, very yeah, like yeah, free yeah. flowing. Whereas because yeah. rugby's quite stop start, you have to have like set piece after set Everybody piece. Everybody has to be in there in right a certain place. position at a certain time. But whereas football's a bit more. Is that a big difference? You think between, between do you think football is just a little bit more fluid? Well, yeah, the, the spectacle on. of football, you get a throw and you take the quick throw and more often or not, don't you? Do you know what I mean, free yeah, kicks yeah. are quite fast as well. As rugby, if the ball goes out, it takes 30 seconds for a line out. Settle. Scrum takes a minute, you know. So. There's like more ball out of play in rugby than there is ball in is play. There, yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? It's eight minutes long. There's usually 32 minutes ball in play and 40 odd. Well, you do the maths. 36 um, talk minutes. Talk to me out. about this up here. What's the Bears' honours board? So, this is basically after the games, usually on a Thursday or a Friday, so actually quite close to the other game. You vote for whoever you think's been essentially the best in each position. So, what have I played? I've played Bath, Irish, and Chiefs. Um, I haven't played in any other game. You've got a few nominations in there, mate, to be first, fair, mate. First game's probably the best game I've ever played in my life, so I, I won, a, won a fair few there. So, defence is for tackles, essentially. Carry is what it says on the tin. Breakdowns at like the rucks and stuff. I rarely win that one, but I've actually scraped one this season. 50-50s is more like back three, so keeper, I yeah, guess, yeah. essentially, like catching high balls and that. 
effort is what it says on the tin, and then POD means player of the day, so whoever's been the best player. Which, out of them, if you had to pick one that you would want to win, which is the best one you'd want to win? Uh, I would say player of the day, but for me, it's probably effort king. Effort king. Yeah, because that's the stuff that you don't see at the time on the pitch, but then when the coaches look back, they say, actually, he's done all the nasty yeah, hard yeah, yeah. work. And I've won that twice, so I'm actually buzzing with that, to be honest. But the ones that everyone likes to win is carry king and defence king and player of the day, because yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. you get all the... All That's the egos, mate. I guarantee you that like, carry king will be like the quick players, like the flair players. Well, I've won it once, so I don't feel that quick. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, come on. Can you come and show me that gym, please? Because I want to see. I want to see what rugby players do in the gym. So I know what it. football players do, and it's not a lot. I no, I mean, I'm interested. I'm interested. I actually want to see what the comparison is. Come to on, be honest. Man. What would you boys do? Like banded work and that. It's all kind of functional stuff. Yeah. Sort of thing. Right. So this is where the magic happens. Um, you probably be familiar with these on the left. The yeah, old there we go. Yeah. Right, oh, before we have a look at the gym, right? Do you ever get on the bikes? N to be honest, like we do, but whatever I do on here is like short bursts, like six seconds, yeah, yeah, twenty yeah. seconds. Max power. Rest. Yeah. So like, there's no point in putting. I'm 120 kegs. There's no point in putting me on there, and making me sweat to death. Is do there? You 120 k. You. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> yeah. god. Mate, I swear, if I was on a rugby pitch and you were running at me, right? I've watched some videos of you, of you to like on my way here today, mate. If you're 120 k, I'm just gonna go. There you go. Yeah, but well, there's Just people go, a lot bigger than me, mate, and I feel the same way about them. Serious? So you can imagine, yeah. Do you know what's your max power on the watt bike? Do you know? 2.2. What? 2.2 watts. 2,200 watts? Yeah, but that's over six seconds, not, not <laughs> average. That's, that's peak. Ridiculous. That's, that's ridiculous. peak. Well, mate, there's boys who beat me, so like oh I said, it's crazy. Gosh. Yeah, that feels very stiff. It's an absolute doddle. You think it is, bro, but the other boys will cream that. I was going to offer to come and spot you then. <laughs> I, I ain't, I ain't you know reckon you got one of these in the tank? No chance. So, so talk to me about sort of like a daily training schedule, yeah? How, yeah. How, how many days a week are you in the gym, for example? Three, four. Yeah? And yeah. How, how long at a time are you in the Three gym? Three of those would be like intense sessions, like yeah. an hour and a half, and then the last one would be like a power session, and then go into the crumb and do some speed. So it's a big part of your, your working day, yeah? I'd probably, probably spend half a day like doing actual work in the gym, and then like, probably 40 minutes prepping to go out and train. Yeah, we got wow. long days, man. Half seven, probably finish at like five, half four, five. You're joking. Well, you got to get everything done. And like, cause like I said, there's so much prep and then like all these dumbbells and stuff get a lot of use. So like, um, can you turn that camera on and just show there's a 70 kilogram weight down there. <laughs> <laughs> there's an actual 70 kilogram weight down there. That's outrageous. They don't see a lot of action, to be honest. I'll be, I'll be brutally honest. <laughs> they rarely get lifted. This is a world-class training um, ground, isn't it? It's sick, oh yeah. My. All right, so you're in the gym, yeah? Mm. I know as footballers, they're, they're a vain bunch, yeah? They are. They're, they're super vain, Ellis. We'll always do this where we'll get like the bench press on the go and it, we'll try and load it as maximum as they can and it will like be showing off and stuff, right? If you had to do a little bit of bench press, show me exactly how much weight you'd put on. Um, well, we warm up like everyone else on 60, so you'd probably two blues, just a warm up one on each 60, side. Yeah. Do you want to bang that one on at the same time? I do, I'll do this, side, I'll yeah? do this. So you put 60 on, and you probably do a few reps on that, and you, put another, nice and warm. Yeah, you put another 20 on 100. That's a hundred kilo. And you put another 20 on. <laughs> I haven't got any <laughs> Behind you, grab that one behind you. Well, and man. then, yeah, depending on how many reps you're doing, that'll, be, that'll probably be like a staple weight for like five reps, I'd say. You could do five reps at 140. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. And then some boys are stupid strong, put like 15s on now, like 180, 170, 180, but I'd hang about, I'd be about here. What, what's your maximum? You ever done a try to 180, maximum? yeah. Oh, but that's like, that's, you see, you think that's strong, it's not that strong. Some people do crazy weight, like proper. I'll go in raw, I'll see, I'll see how You're going to bang a few of these at 140, I'll get a few, yeah. I'll get a few, I'll get a few. But Wait. like, yeah, that feels very stiff. That's an absolute doddle. You think it is, bro, but the other boys would cream that. I was going to offer to come and spot you then. <laughs> I, I ain't, I ain't you know reckon you got one of these in the tank? No chance. What would you do? I think my maximum is about 100. I shouldn't have said that. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> That's 120 off, come on. Oh. I got you. Just one rep. Right, you're gonna have to spot this, all right? I'm nervous now, okay? God. Why did I say 100? Why didn't I say, why didn't I say like 80 or 90 <laughs> or something? God's sake. I'm backing you. All right, I did bench press yesterday, so I might be tired, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So that's probably what me, it is. Me okay? too, me too. 
Right. Is On that, you, ready? Is that even, like, yeah, That's yeah. even, A mate. bit more. Oh, my God's sake. Right, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. There he is! Zoddle, come on! You'd have got the 140 up, I reckon. My fly, I think I bust my fly then. <laughs> I think my fly popped open. <laughs> Look at that pro putting the weights back as well. That's it, mate. You, you happy with that? I was, I was genuinely impressed. It yeah. looked easy, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, you made it fly up. Check and you had an art session yesterday. Exactly, that's what it is, mate. Right, come on, show me this recovery centre, okay? Get down there. So basically, like, you come out of the gym, obviously, hard day at training. Medical office there, physio there, spend a fair bit of time getting a bit of treatment and that. Then you've got like S and C and they basically, because they're all so close together, they like link up if you need anything. Protein in there. Ellis, can you just please try and explain to me why we have these on the wall instead of using the tubs? Yeah, so we brought the self-serve system in, so you literally just put it across there. I won't waste too much of it, but the reason being, obviously, with the protein things, they don't accommodate for everyone, so... I actually haven't got the biggest hands in the world, but like, as you can see, I don't exactly fit in easy, so. And when you've got severe arthritis in your hands, it's hard to get that fucking tiny little, I can't even see it, but yeah, we had to swap Big it. Big bear paws, that's exactly, what it is, yeah. The mitts, the mitts. And then we've got like hydro in here. Oh, let's have a look at this. So this is like hot and cold, yeah? Yeah, so that's ice. We've actually got someone in the sauna now. There is actually someone in Big the sauna Ken's. now. Big Ken's. What are you saying, bro? This is Ben. Hello, my mate, you okay? Go on, I don't mind, mate. You okay, yeah? What you got at? 120 he's cooking at. Whoa. Looking good, bro. Heavy night last night, yeah? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> um, yeah, so you got like ice into sauna, and then they got like a hot tub here. It don't get much used to, as you can imagine, the boys are quite dirty in that when they get in, so yeah, it ain't even full up at the moment. But like the shower setups are class. Like I said, at your traditional rugby club, they're terrible. But this is all quite sharp. So and these are changing rooms? Change yeah? rooms in here, yeah. Call the little badges next to them, like for the generals and that, so the more caps and stuff you get, like the higher you climb the ranks. That's incredible. We have nothing like that in football, so what, what's this one here? I think that's crown? corporal, whatever that So means. they're like a higher rank, basically, Well, these, yeah. these boys got a lot of caps, yeah. Yeah, not higher rank as in necessarily, like, you got more pull in the team, but yeah. just, like, you've played more caps, so the way it works in the changing rooms is, like, I'll just take heads off, but... So you pull it off like that, and then Pat comes in and he says, like, Whoever's got the most appearances gets to choose where they sit in the change room yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gives you your thing, and if you choose to sit back here, it's up to you. But yeah, the more appearances you get, the you get to choose where it's you like sit. It's like a respect thing, yeah. Yeah, no one ever moves, to be honest, but like it is quite cool. You come in, and he says, like, right, first call is X, Y, and Z, so it's pretty sick. Do you have, ever have anybody come in being a dickhead and, like, yeah, and just, just to pick somebody else's locker? <laughs> it happened once this year with oh. Gabs, he's new, and then one of the academy boys got moved up. And Gavs was sitting here all pre-season next to me and Sinks. And then Johnny, one of the boys, was like, yeah, I'm going to sit here. But didn't know Gabs had all this stuff in there. And Gavs was fuming, but he actually moved back. He's got to move, though. He had to move. He had to move. Stopped playing football after that. And like that was why I tried karate, I tried box, I tried everything. Basketball and obviously all like, except for the martial arts, which you need like strict discipline for, yeah, which yeah. I didn't have at the time. So my old man took me out of it, put me to rugby, and I haven't looked back since, to be honest. Right, Ellis, I want to talk about how brutal a sport rugby actually is, yeah? And my first question is, how does your body feel the day after a game? Or is it the day after, or is it two days after? No, yeah, usually it's two days after, to be honest, especially for me, like, it takes me way longer to recover than most. So what are you, 27 now? 27 now, so I can't, well, I can, but I tend not to eat after games. Because you take so much caffeine in the game, like, it messes your stomach yeah, up, yeah. so I struggle to eat after games, so I'm like, we got these like milkshakes that we get, like a thousand cow milkshakes, and you just pump a load of them, and I oh, know it's great. But like that for me is harder than the playing bit, like recovering. Like I really struggle to. I love doing ice baths. Well, I don't love them, but I enjoy what yeah. I get out of the ice baths. But like eating after the games, like my body is like feels so bruised and stuff two days after because I don't eat enough to. But I know that nutritionist is always on to me with all these shakes, and I'm like, see, Fuck, you so. play on a Saturday, yeah, for example. Saturday. When yeah. are you training again next? Monday. Like full full training, yeah. Uh, you it'd be low low key, but you'd be doing a bit of shoulder running training. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you'd be lifting full weights at least. My yeah, God. like and and, and in training, is it is it as heavy as what you see in the games? Because in the games, yeah, like I, I say, I watch I watched videos of you earlier, right? Oh, it's sickening, mate. There's sort of like <laughs> fully grown men just getting like moved, pushed out of the way, kind of flying mid air, and I'm thinking, surely you can't live your life in training like that as well. Mm, well, there's no malice in training. Like yeah. I'd never run into anyone and genuinely try and hurt them or, yeah. you know, but in a game it's a different story, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like, there's a bit of venom in the games. But in training, I'm not ever going to be up. I'm going to fucking try <laughs> break him, you know? So there's almost that gentleman's agreement. I'm sure you got in football as well, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. people ain't coming in two feet in training necessarily or sliding in training as, or 
Sometimes, mate. really. When there's a bit of needle, mate. Well, yeah, that's like we call it niggle. So, like, if there's ever someone gets dropped and like left out of the team that probably should be training, it's yeah. like, right, they bring a, bring a bit of niggle and training. So, like, they're flying into each other, and like, you almost have to bring everyone and say, boys, fuck me. Like, we got a game in two days, uh, three days. Like, you played three days ago, and now you're like hammering each other on a Wednesday. Like, where were you on Saturday, you know? Wow. So, like, there's always that bit of like when you get a setback, people start firing up, and you're like, well, fuck, it's too late, you know? <laughs> Why weren't you doing that on the Saturday? The op that, that's quite literally the opposite of football. Really? Really? Honestly, right? We have we have players who kind of you lose a game on a Saturday and they're almost down tools in the week. And it, it's a case of us having to say, Let's step it up a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of, oh, I need to see a reaction from you. I need to see you putting it in and sticking the boot it's in so and stuff. So weird. It's literally the complete opposite in rugby. So like, if you play brilliant on the weekend, usually people are like flying for training, really? whereas like the other way around in, in, in football. football yeah. So I played a match last season, right? Um, a Southampton away. Yeah. Um, they had a young lad come on, Brozier, Brozier his name is. The ball got looped up and I've come out for a punch, right? And I can see him going ahead at the same time. And you'll know what I'm talking about here, right? I knew that I was going to win the ball by punching it, but I knew also You're gonna that catch one. I'm going to, I'm going to, no, I knew I'm going to catch him. I know I am. And it's like, I'm sorry, mate, but I've got to do this. He ended up breaking his nose, right? <laughs> this, there was about 15 minutes to go or whatever. He went off, yeah? In a rugby match, if you've just done that to somebody and they've broken their nose, are they going off? There you go. To the bottom buds that you know, <laughs> crack on. The worst I've ever seen on rugby pitch was, I forget his name, the Australian second row player at Harlequins, playing against him for Leicester. He dislocated, but a compound fractured his finger. Come through. So Bones come oh. out, and he was just putting his hand up like that, going like, "Can I get some strapping for this, please?" And they tried strapping it up. He went up to the next line out, took the ball, and he was like, "Nah, I got, I got to come off." But his bone was hanging out of his fucking finger, and he wanted to carry on. I'm not saying I'd do that, but I think the adrenaline and the caffeine almost numbs that pain yeah. for a little bit. I got splatted before on my nose, bad, absolutely pissing out. And you get blood bin in in rugby, so you can go ten minutes, sort yourself out, and come back on. So usually you just do that. But there's been some savage ones. What's the, what's the worst one you've ever had? Injury? Yeah. On the pitch, probably my shoulder. You'd know this, labrum, like diving everywhere. So oh. like, my labrum was cooked. I had like a grade two. And then like, the coach was like, one more game, mate. I need you for one more game. We were like sick. And like, we weren't going to finish top four. I was like, fuck me. Do you really need me for this yeah. last game? Anyway, ran out about 32 minutes in. I've gone like that to offload the ball and someone's caught my arm up there and as I'm going down, I can just hear the music in my head slowly, <sighs> <laughs> slowly setting off into the sunset onto the operating bed like that. And I was going down, boom, felt my shoulder pop and I was like, on coming off the pitch, like, you, like pointing at him thinking, what the fuck Why did you, you put me, me in there? there? But at the end of the day, look, I agreed to it. I was old enough and ugly enough to say no and I didn't. So I went out, grade three, almost sublux and I was like, fuck me, I wish I never did that. I got the operation. I would have needed one anyway. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it yeah. was manageable at the time when I, and I remember I went to get myself back up the floor after being like fuck me that I went to get myself back up and I couldn't even push myself up I just hit the deck with my face and I was like someone bring me up yeah, but yeah. I'll, I'll be honest like rugby is absolutely vicious like from the outside if you came in and trained now you'd be an absolute bit so like, first session I ever did with senior boys when I signed my first contract couldn't walk for a week and that's oh. that's genuine couldn't walk for a week prior to sesh like on the crumb fucked now I've got older, I struggle more when I stop playing in pre-season to come back and do it. Like, I'm in absolute tatters after that. Yeah. So I'm better when I keep going, like, game after game. I played 31 games that Your year. body conditions too. You get conditioned, yeah. Like, you get used to knocks and, like, you never play 100% fit. You're always carrying a little knock or something. So you almost should learn to put up with it. OK, final question then. Um, my son plays a bit of rugby, right? Oh, and right. he's got, he's got uh, a couple of lads in his team who... When, they, when they're going to tackle somebody or when they've got the ball and somebody tackles them, right, they get this look in their eyes and it's like it's, like it's their job to hurt somebody. It's like their favourite thing in the world, I right? Can have you, I know you've got this in you, but is this something that you were born with or have you had to teach yourself to no, be like No, I've that? always had it in me and that's probably why I went to rugby from football because I used to play in goal and like as soon as a striker put a ball from was coming out, I was going straight at his knees. <laughs> Every <laughs> single time I was going head first straight at his knees and trying to take him just before. Just fearless, I yeah? Well, I just knew that I, he didn't want to get hurt. Yeah, and if don't. I put myself there first, he wasn't going to touch the ball. So that was why I stopped playing. I actually copped a red for that once, like coming out steaming into the striker. <laughs> yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. My old man was happy but the coach was fuming so stopped playing football after that and like that was why I tried karate I tried box I tried everything basketball and obviously all like except for the martial arts which you need like strict discipline for yeah, which yeah. I didn't have at the time I was giving my sister the old hi yeah so my <laughs> old man took me out of it put me to rugby and I haven't looked back since to be honest I've questioned it a few times but more in my later years yeah. like 
I think I compare the money to what other people get paid in other sports, I think, fuck me, we do a lot worse than yeah, some of these sure. boys and we don't get paid as much. But if I take the finances away from it and just strictly the, the love of the game, like, yeah, I can't get enough of it. So I think rugby in terms of like progression socially, what it's gave me, I'll never be able to thank anyone enough. Yeah. But like, mate, I was just completely isolated, didn't want anything to do with anyone. I come into England camp first day, full tracksuit, do you know what I mean? Like, no one's ever seen anything like it, stonied right up, like. You mean Stone Island tracking? Yeah, full head to Island. toe, head to toe. I love this, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> right, come on then, big dog. You're gonna let me boot some balls at you. I'm keen, brother. Go on I'm then, ready. you hold them, right? Um, we'll do that in a minute, but I want to talk about, we've got Autumn Internationals coming up soon, yeah? Yeah. Um, but I saw an article that said when you first got into the England team, it was a bit, you, you, you didn't necessarily enjoy it, it was a bit clicky. Um, yeah, what was it? What was that about? I think like the thing in rugby that you obviously, I actually don't know if you'd see it, I think it's a sport thing in general. I think when you first come into that England environment sort of six years ago, something that we worked so hard on to get rid of is like not feeling yourself and not feeling welcome necessarily. And to be honest, 90% of that's self-inflicted, like you come in and you automatically think yeah. you're, like you get imposter syndrome. You're you know? shy in that. Or you yeah, come in yeah, young yeah, and you yeah, think yeah. you ain't good enough to be there. So. Yeah. I had a bit of imposter syndrome. I was very, very different from everyone else yeah. there, but I latched on to someone called Carl Sinclair. You probably haven't heard of him, but no. he's similar upbringing to me, made me feel comfortable, looked after me, been there for a little bit before me. So I think in rugby, like in football, obviously everyone's from a similar sort of upbringing. Obviously you get a few, well, not as many as rugby at least, like private school people. Yeah, so. Yeah. Because I came from a different sort of path to rugby, I just felt so, I guess, excluded different from it. Yeah, well, I just couldn't yeah. relate to anything they were really talking about, and I had different interests, different music tastes, different in general, slits in my eyebrows, you know what I mean? So I come in and automatically I think, fuck me, I'm completely out of my depth. But I've learned over the years, and one of the good coaches that I've had, Eddie Jones, who's currently head coach there now, just said, like, mate, the reason I don't pick you is because you're never yourself, and like, he can almost smell it on me, because he's not from that sort of background anyway, yeah. so he could smell it on me that I was uncomfortable, moving a bit shifty, couldn't really integrate with everyone, but over the years, we've definitely had a big shift in sort of attitude, and like, it's not really there anymore, but there's a little bit left, and we're just trying to squeeze how, how it do you, out. How did you overcome that? How did you get to the point where you felt comfortable turning up for England all the time? Just letting go, like coming in, not, I would walk around like fucking real stiff, like yeah. literally. That's if just I, you in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, <laughs> exactly, but you come in, like if you spilt a fucking glass of water on a table, you'd think, fuck me, I'm going to get sent home, you know? Like you just felt, as a youngster coming into that camp, you felt so restricted and like I think we've worked so hard over the past few years to sort of get rid of that perception that when you come in you have to be a certain way like yeah. obviously you play your best rugby when you're being yourself and like you're relaxed and you're free so we were finding people were coming in literally going away telling people they weren't enjoying it and we were like what the fuck's going on it's supposed to be best times of your life playing yeah. for your country so yeah we worked hard and like basically just creating a sort of social environment where people were absolutely whether like your Courtney Law's got 95 caps or your Marcus Smith coming in had two caps like it was basically let's make sure everyone feels that they're on the exact same level playing field and there's always going to be that like hierarchy in terms of like people who've been playing there for 10 years and one year but I think that's more about respect as opposed to environment yeah you know? I think you know what that's that's quite similar to like the England men's football team as well I remember I remember back in the day being in the being in the England team and it was so clicky mate honestly like I find horrible. that fucking bizarre it was so weird mate like it would you could you could sense the the sort of the atmosphere as well do you know what I mean but that's what football's like though, isn't it's it? like, weird mate it's your so fans weird. don't sit with each other like you get diehard supporters whereas rugby is the complete opposite but yeah I think that's more driven from like like I said like the route you get to playing rugby like private schools and very corporate and sort of like white collar whereas like football is obviously salt of the earth yeah, grassroots yeah, yeah. so like I think that's probably the demographic that you see come into the environment all right come on let me boot some of these let's balls at you let's do it look by the way you see the fingers because I bust my finger like last year so you got to, I've been playing ones. with that for about oh, two years oh shit that makes sense right what do you want me to do do some volleys here yeah <laughs> Right. I'm actually fucking intimidated. <laughs> There's no way you're intimidated. I'm just going to pop some volleys, yeah? yeah? I ain't going to blast them or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, just yeah. a nice little warm-up, right, yeah? Cool. But you said you were a goalie, so you should be all right. Yeah, I'm ready. Go on, then. Here we it's go. It's been a few years. Oh, he's a doddle. He's got it. Oh, poacher's getting that. Right, last one. Come on, see if you can get this. Oh, Look at that. Do you know about that? <laughs> Mate, you're big poor there. <laughs> um, right, so back home now in Bristol, yeah? yeah. Talk to me about a young Ellis Genge? Um, well, there's a lot to say. I guess in a nutshell, I'd say probably if you would have met me, what am I now, 27, if you would have met me 14 years ago. I'm still booting balls at you, Yeah, let's go. 14 years ago, like I was just a complete different character, I'd say. Just socially in general, like what sports gave me, 
is like that sort of confidence in terms of communicating. Like I never used to be able to look anyone in the eye. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you'd be able to relate to that as well. Like yeah. you go to these corporate events and that and you fucking put a suit on. You've never, yeah, vile, do you know what I mean? You don't want to yeah. chat to anyone. So I think rugby in terms of like progression socially, what it's gave me, I'll never be able to thank anyone enough. Yeah. But like, mate, I was just completely isolated. Didn't want anything to do with anyone. I come into England camp first day, full tracksuit, do you know what I mean? Like no one's ever seen anything like it, stonied right up. Like <laughs> I probably would have fit in well in the football scene, but obviously I had zero fucking talent in you football. You mean Stone so. Island tracking? Yeah, head to toe, head to toe. I love this, I love it. <laughs> and like, well, you see the sponsors in rugby, it's always like suit brands or yeah. like these real corporate. And like, oh, fuck, I'd love to see a crossover with something like that. I don't know if it would ever happen, but... Mate, why not, mate? Why shouldn't it get to something like that? But that's, like that's that? what I think the game needs, is like to sort of break down those barriers and bring people from where I'm from into the game. Like, yeah. that's, how, that's how you familiarise people with that, you know? Like, make them feel like they're at home. So you start bringing in, like, tech fleeces and full stone island tracky stuff like that, and then they start feeling, all right, everyone else is wearing the same as what I'm oh. at. TNs and all that, Air Max and that sort of stuff. But at the moment, it's very much so like suit and blazers. Like I said, it's, it's starting to sort of tone it down a bit, but they're still at the core of the game. So that's what we're trying to... Right, have a little look at this, yeah? Come on then. I think I do it that way. Bro, that's all right. I want to, but... Oh, it's hard in the fucking keeper gloves, I can tell you that. Have you seen rugby gloves? No, you got they rugby They got like gloves. tiny, like fingerless gloves, yeah, that they put on. Oh my God, you zing that. Not in these fucking Mate, things. you must break fingers for fun. Well, when you catch it, you'd know, obviously, from football. When you catch one on the front like that. Oh, stinger. So that's spinning like that. So you, that's how everyone usually passes. But you can push it as well. So, like, it's a bit harder in a fucking pair of gloves, but... <laughs> oh, that's horrible. <laughs> right, so back in Bristol now, yeah? Because mm. this is you. You're born and bred, aren't you, in Bristol? Um, how important is it for you to be, like I say, back home where you grew up, playing, um, and then just trying to like help the community, trying to, even rugby in general, just trying to change perspectives of, of what it means to be a rugby player and how to get there. That was ultimately why I came back, but in the same breath, like whilst I've been back, I went to Knoll Park School last week where I grew up, yeah. and they didn't even know that I was coming in for the assembly, but I've walked down the corridor, Black History Week, like I'm on the wall, they're sticking my face in the books and stuff at the school that I grew up at, so for me, like that was touching for me, That's I was nice emotional, that, yeah. yeah, yeah, I was emotional, and I thought, fuck me, like I can actually have an impact on these kids, and, like, they might want to play rugby one day, Damn so right. instead of them wanting to grow up and be, I don't know, the Bobby Reeds who's from Bristol, gone on to play football, and Joe Bryan who's gone on to play at Nice now, like, these people who all come from our area and gone to play football for once, I'd love them to just be like, boom, yeah, I want to be a rugby player. Right, do you want to pump some balls at me? I'll give it a go, yeah. What are you going to do, volleys or are you going to... I reckon just off the of deck, that's my speciality, you see. All right, then. Don't yeah. welly it, yeah? No, I won't, I won't. Let me... I probably won't even get this on target, to be honest, bro. <laughs> See, that's a little taste. That's a little taste. Go on, that give me a bad one strike, either. Try and get it in my hands. Oh, you're horrible. Is that shit? You were never going to make it as a. Is that proper though. shit? Yeah. All right, let me. I'll give it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Right, no, get it in Come there. Jesus, Christian. My God. All right, let's leave the football there because you're going to break my <laughs> finger, right? You're definitely busting a finger. Um, I might get a contract after that. Definitely not, mate. <laughs> no, you can't even twist. And then you bind with this arm, like that, and then it's... What? <laughs> <laughs> I did not like that. No, but imagine fucking seven people banging you in, do you know what I mean? All right, talk to me about scrums, OK? Because... When you're in it, there's like, what, eight other players on their team looking at you? Yeah. But I saw a video of you the other day, and uh, you're in the scrum, and you're kind of looking at your mate opposite you, mate, and you've just gone, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> I love that kind of thing. Is that what it is? It's like mind games. Yeah, right? yeah well, like scrummaging, obviously, firstly, the front three is supposed to be strongest on the pitch. Not always. You get some mental Fijian wingers who are stronger than the front row. Yeah. It's crazy. But essentially, like, it's, yeah, it's eight on eight, like the most macho part of the game. Um, you're right in the mix. It's painful on the net, but like, there's no other feeling that I can and, like, I'd rather get a scrum penalty than score a try. Do you know what I mean? Like, in football, that's, like, probably winning a foul than scoring a goal. Is that, like, I mean? energy when you're all together and oh, gripping yeah, like that? Yeah, there ain't a feeling like it. When you're underneath someone and you lift them out of the scrum, like, you just feel on top of the world, do you know what I mean? Like, you feel <laughs> ten foot tall, so... Like, it's probably most boring part of the game for someone who might never watch a game rugby, yeah. but when you're, like, uh, a purist, say, of the sport, like, that's the most satisfying part of the you game. You can really test your strength. And exactly, like, Come yeah, on, then. exactly. Right, can I have a go on this, then? Yeah, yeah. yeah this right, is go a, on, stand on it. It's so a double, this, <laughs> this is a single man sled, so, obviously, you wouldn't ever do, like, teamwork on this, but, like, you basically got a coach here, and you 
bend down in front. Do you want me to show you how to do that bit first? Yeah, please, mate. All right, so you stand on this. Oh, get a little shit. bird's I'm gonna have over. I'm going to hold onto it. So I'm a loose head, so only one side of my head goes in the scrum. So like this wouldn't be here for, for me, but like you come down and the ref will say like crouch. So you'd be like, I'll be bound up someone else, a flanker behind me, a second row on that side. So you're literally going into like a tiny little hole. <laughs> it's fucking scary to Mate, start your with. your neck, like you've got a massive neck yeah. anyway, but like I'd be but worried you, my But like I said, neck. you get used to it, but it would fucking hurt the first one with that. <laughs> and then you'll, you'll crouch and then like basically, They've took it out now, but it still happens. Like, you used to take the whole weight on your head, oh, so like man. you'd be leaning into the scrum like that. And like all the fucking, oh, it's horrible, but they've took it away now, kind of. It's do you, still genuinely, happens. do you have to do any neck weights or anything oh, like that? Oh, every day, do yeah. You really, yeah. Every day, yeah. But you get like, you get work from scrummaging, yeah, you know, yeah. like it, it does the repetitions. Anyway, you come down, it's crouch, and then you bind with this arm, like that. And then it's... What? <laughs> <laughs> I did not like that. No, but imagine fucking seven people banging you in, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's intense. <laughs> it's intense. <laughs> you could have just shifted me then and kept going. I don't know, you? I'm fucked. I can't do that. But <laughs> let's, let's have a look at your technique. Come on, let me have a go. This is where you get criticised the most. Oh, mate, I think I got ripped last time. <laughs> that was rapid. There's a claim. Right, so I'll go one arm, yeah? Can I yeah. go my strong arm? Yeah, yeah, that'd be tight head side. So that's the supposed hardest position on the pitch. Nah, I'll go left arm. Nah, go mate. right, right, back yourself. Back so yourself. I just go one. So you go right foot forward with tight head, yeah? yeah. You go split stance, so tight heads everywhere around. So you, this is like your foot that's allowed to move. Your left one ain't allowed to move. Yeah, it's your okay. anchor foot, right? So you come down, you go crouch, then you bind, move your foot, and then you're in. <sighs> It's not even a real person, I'm sure. <laughs> are you right, are you standing on this? Do you yeah. want me to stand on it or do you want to go without? No, I'll go without. Yeah. Are you what gonna you? shot yourself, I reckon? What do you mean? I reckon you're gonna be good. Oh yeah, all right. Right, crouch. And then it's bind, bind and then bang. Bind and then you we say go on the S of set, get the jump on them. So as I'm saying set, you wanna go on this. Yeah, all right, ready? Right, ready? Crouch. Bind. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> I feel like I'm going to go at an angle. Like, <laughs> well, that's the hard bit, not going at an angle. Yeah. Right, crouch, bind, set. <laughs> nah, bring it back. You get on that, I'm penalty. shifting you. You got a penalty. <laughs> I'm shifting you. Bro, that's what do you weigh, 120 kilos? 120, yeah. Come on a big dog. You ready? Oh, no, I'm not. That 100 feel? kilos taken out of me earlier. A lot of testosterone pumping about. You ready? I went out on my bike this morning as well. Some hammies are a bit That's tight. That's it, bro. You look fresh, though. Yeah, cheers, guys. All right, ready? Right, Crouch, right. bind, set. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> bro, that's good. That's good. Oh, nah, that's no good, mate. <laughs> oh, that was good. Nah, it's not for me, this game. you got to keep your ass down a little bit more. That's what I'd say. You're like this, look. So you're pushing down. If you get your like ass down like that, yeah, yeah. you push a bit easier. Nah. Bro, for the first time, that's good. Pop cool. your scrum cherry. Can we go and kick some balls outside? Yeah, let's do it. That's the easy part, though. You look good. Yeah, I'm blowing. <laughs> Come on, let's go outside. Bro, that was actually good. <laughs> Impressed. Oh, your shoulder hey, We're going to boot some of these balls in a minute, all right? But Autumn International is coming up. I know they're kind of like, I see them as friendlies almost, yeah, but is there any such thing as a friendly when it comes to rugby? I don't, I don't, I don't know why they've ever been called friendlies because like, the people that you play are the people that you don't usually get to play, so you want to make the like, best impression you can and like, obviously from a team point of view leading to the World Cup, I don't think they're going to be very friendly. So night before the game, you still get those nerves, like, like butterflies, all that I think kind of everyone's stuff. different, like, it's like anything, you know what I mean? First time you sit on a motorbike, you're probably shitting yourself, but like, the more you ride it, obviously, the more confident you get. So the more test caps you've got, I think the easier it is to sort of settle your nerves. But you see some boys in a room completely silent, really? com like change person, you know, like just complete different person. And on the beginning of the week, they're all jumping, dancing about and that. But they they come, <laughs> exactly, like the bums are out. So <laughs> it, it's, but I think you probably see that in football as well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, dressing rooms, talk to me about dressing rooms before the games, right? So, who's the guys that goes around and does the talks, okay? Because we were talking to, is it Minty? Yeah. Minty's like one of the coaches inside. And he said, he said Ellis, right, for example, he's, he's this kind of reserved guy. He's not always shouting and screaming. But when it comes to a team talk before the game, there's nobody better. They were his words, by the way. Yeah, I don't know if Minty's ever seen one, but <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's a bit different. Like some people like to shout and ball, and like, I, I don't like that leading into the game. I won't say much, and then when we get into the change room, if you sort of smell that, I guess 
fear, I guess, yeah. from the other boys. You've got to like stamp that out straight away. So I tried to sort of take more onus on it myself and and like get a, like, goosebumps on the back of the neck and sort of stuff. So yeah, I, I probably changed, like I said a second ago, I probably changed character when we get into yeah, the changing yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And final question before I slot a few of these bad boys through there, right? I don't know if you saw this, but the big man, Cristiano Ronaldo, walked off the bench. Yeah, did you see this? I did, yeah. Couple minutes left to go to the game, went walking down that dugout, like there into the thing. What would happen in a rugby dressing room, oh, right? If you had yeah. just seen that happen. He was about to get subbed on as well, wasn't he? He was and about he to said, get subbed nah, on, yeah. I, I personally, like, I think he's amazing, like superstar and that, but that's, that's wild. I don't think any circumstance you can warrant that, unless you really need to go to a toilet. Then you shouldn't be walking down What's the tunnel. What's happening in the changing rooms then? But I honestly think someone would have grabbed him by the ear and really? pulled, pulled him back out and made him go <laughs> on, yeah. that's. That's unheard of. That would have been the best content footage uh, yeah, I've ever yeah. seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think players would have policed that. That, ne that never would have happened. Really? That's not even yeah. a thing, is it? I can't even comprehend it. Yeah. Right, come on, let's get these let's bad boys out, piece, right? Yeah. Ellis, right? You're not exactly renowned for your kicking, are you? No, I think I'll probably get the boot if I try kicking a ball. Have, have you got any like tips for me for anything like that? Uh, I've watched a lot of good kickers and I think if just keep your head down and follow it. That's what that's what George Ford always tells me. I don't know if I'm going to listen to a word you said because <laughs> listen, he put the ball down on the cone, right? And I went, "Is that how it's supposed to be?" And he went, oh, "I ain't got a clue." And you said you were going to toe poke this. I'm going to well. I, 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 just just like a good golf swing. Just keep your bro. There's a lot of pressure. Hey, that ain't that far away. You should nah, be able to get that over it's there. The, well, we'll see. It's the strike, isn't it? It's the. <laughs> that is disgusting. <laughs> that was horrible. But that was expected. <laughs> that was expected. Right, come on, I'm having a go. I'm having a go. I won't lie to you, right? If I don't get this over, I'm going to be a bit gutted. Am I backing you? I'm backing you. I'd be shocked if you don't. It's tough on a cone. I'll be Usually honest, they get a proper tee that like. I might not up. get it through it, but It'd if, be a I don't, strike. if I don't welly it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, All right, come on then, get that lefty warmed up. Ready? You've got under it. Can I have another go? That was all right, yeah. yeah come on, give me one more go. I think, yeah, I know what I did. I fell off it a little bit. And I don't think I struck it very well I either. That's a, the, the little tilt's key, I think. We didn't have the tilt. Right. It's going there through. we go. It's going through. Of course it's going <laughs> through. <laughs> <laughs> I want one more. <laughs> I can't be the only one not to put it through. Right, come on then, there you go, the tilt on, get the, the tilt on, key. yeah? The tilt's key, the tilt's key. That's it. Come on then. That still don't look great, does it? Yeah, there you go. Oh, man! <laughs> that was class! Redemption. It's just that a was way better. that's all it was. That was way better. People get paid better. for doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know why. Mate, raise, you want to raise, yeah, exactly. all right? That was say. world class. The first prop to kick. <laughs> Okay, Ellis, thank you for having me today, big man, uh, and showing me around this lovely training ground. It's absolutely beautiful. You come down whenever you want. I appreciate that. And all the best in the internationals, okay? Thank you, bro. Go thank smash you. it. I know you will anyway, you little tanko. Uh, and guys, don't forget, you can watch all of the upcoming Autumn Internationals exclusively live on Prime Video.